all right all right what is going on my lovely ladies and gentlemen of the world i am here to try out something new i am here to discuss aspects of game design and in this one i want to talk about random battles now random battles has seen a lot of negativity in recent days you know obviously it used to be a staple back in the old you know 8-bit uh, rpg days 16-bit rpg days you know they didn't really have the technology to be displaying stuff on screen for you to run into and then initiate a fight in that manner. Thus, random battles were a thing. And you know, there are still numerous games that utilize the random battle system. Pokemon is obviously one of the biggest ones that still uses it. Uh, and mo it's mostly a JRPG staple. And so just because of the negativity surrounding it, I kind of wanted to talk about it because I do not think the mechanic itself uh, is a negative mechanic at its base i really do believe that um it can be made to be good and so this the reason why we have this game up here right now is because i believe that this game has an example of making random battles good now firstly because as we all know creating drama is how you get attention thus i shall do just that by calling out a reviewer from a website called destructoid.com a man named chris carter reviewed this game and said many things but one of them was false he claimed that there was no way to remove the battles from the game entirely later on you were able to uh, lower the frequency of them, but you could not remove them. Now, let me prove the man wrong. As you see right now, granted, it's, it's grayed out, which means I can't use it because I have not met the requirements, and that is the thing that I am here to discuss. But you see here, so basically, just to kind of outline what this all is, um, the basis of this game is that you become a hacker, and very the hackers of this world, of this particular world, utilize Digimon to supplement their hacking abilities and so all of this stuff that you see right here all of these abilities are intrinsically tied to my Digimon thus I need to meet certain requirements in order to use them so for instance all the Digimon in this game have a certain type uh, I believe there's four there's the free type which is just kinda neutral there's nothing really special about it, it doesn't have any weaknesses doesn't have uh, an advantage against anybody it is literally neutral then you have data, vaccine, and virus. And so some of these aren't tied to that. You know, like, so I believe uh, this one down here. This requires you to have a free Digimon type of rookie or higher. Uh, and so anyway, various other ones of these require you to have a virus type or a data type or a vaccine type. Now, these right here, these high security versions, uh, these are based around the rank of Digimon you have. So, what I want to discuss. Now... This is why I do not believe that random battles are a bad thing by themselves. Now, it is very nice to be able to see and uh, potentially maneuver your way around battles on the overworld map through the use of, you know, overworld sprites and stuff that if you touch them, you transport you into a battle, blah, 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 all of that stuff. I see the appeal of it, and I'm certainly not going to argue that it's a bad thing. I am simply here to argue that random battles are not intrinsically a bad thing because of a system such as this. So you see these called high security. Reduces encounters, greatly reduces encounters, eliminates encounters. Then you have function call. This just increases the encounters. Function call level 2 forces an encounter. It literally puts me into... The moment I use that, it puts me into a fight. Now, a lot of games utilize a system like this. There's a sweet scent in Pokemon. I think there's a second one that also calls in an automatic fight as so long as fights are available. Uh, in Pokemon. But anyway, Pokemon has that. Dragon Quest has that through an ability called Whistle. Um, was a, there was a third one that I was thinking of, and now I cannot remember it. But anyway, there are various RPGs that utilize that system. They force a battle right at that moment. There's not many that I can think of, though, that reduce the frequency of random battles. and th So that's what I wanted to talk about. That's why I think that random battles can be a good thing, because you put the power of how often you get into random battles in the hands of the player now if I was to design this myself I would put in an option menu a slider that allows you to you know for various levels I would say like five is the absolute minimum that you would want so you have like you know three would be the default amount two would be reduced one would be eliminated four would be increased 
and then five would either be like greatly increased or you i one thing that i thought of that i think would be a really good idea is the ability to chain as many battles together as you want so you never leave the battle screen you just stay in there you fight you get the results you go into the next fight you get the results you go into the next fight there's no transitioning out of it there's no forcing you to come back onto the overworld map whatever is occurring you just chain from battle to battle to battle and you go for as long as you want until you're like all right i have received the experience that i want i've received the and the items that i want and the reasoning for that is that i think one thing a lot of games really fail to do is streamline its own process where now if i was to say let me just uh use this real quick so hopefully i do not get into a fight but so in most games if i want to <laughs> that shit worked well um anyway <laughs> that's kind of that's pretty amazing the timing on that that is that could not have really gone any worse than it just did anyway so let's pretend that i didn't get into a fight and i was just running around in a circle that's what you would have to do uh in quite in a substantial amount of other games that's what you would have to do is you would have to just sit there and run and around around and around in a circle just sitting here endlessly until you end up getting into a fight that's wasted time that's an unnecessary uh part of the game you don't need to do that thus anything that removes the unnecessary aspect of the game is a wonderful thing and that is why i think having the ability to chain as many battles together as you want in a game system such as this is a fantastic thing and i would certainly be all for it and it's the exact same thing with being able to decide you know what i don't want to get into any fights I just want to go explore. Let me do that. Now there are certain points in time in which I think you would you may want to remove that for instance. You get jailed up. Like you know there's a lot of RPGs where you get caught, you get thrown into jail, then you got to escape jail, you got to avoid guards, blah blah blah. Now that is a point in which I think random battles should not be possible to eliminate entirely because of the atmosphere of that part. You know, you should not just be completely safe and be able to say all right i should not get into battles here but you should be able to reduce them that kind of thing so you know it just it kind of depends upon the scenario but i really do feel that at the very least being able to reduce them to a minimal level is absolutely required in a game like this in order to suit the player's preferences because whoever comp well, I, people have plenty of people have complained about having you know like more options like for instance difficulty options right there are a lot of people who will bitch and moan about the uh, addition of an easy mode to a game. Like, this game is not meant to be easy. That mode should not exist in this game. This lessens the game because other people are going to be able to beat it. Like, how? It's a completely optional option that you can completely ignore and never experience throughout the entirety of your game. But it allows other people who may not be able to experience the full game on a hard difficulty or, you know, something else, but are capable of, you know, having the satisfaction of playing the game through an easy mode. But yet, I mean, so anyway, that's why I feel like the more options you have, the better, because it includes more people. There's nothing, if it's an optional selection nobody is excluded it doesn't hurt anybody it's your choice whether or not you know you say all right yes i want to use this option or no fuck that i'm not going to use it so that is why i think uh random battles can definitely be a good thing if you allow it to be usable by a player because you know again it also will one of the big things about random battles and uh is that you don't get to avoid fights if you don't want to that's one of the big things so you know there's a variety of reasons why you want to avoid fights you just want to get through a section maybe or you don't want to level up at all you want to maintain your current level because it's a nice challenge at that point in the game and you don't want to level up you don't want to get any uh stronger you want to keep your characters where they are there's all kinds of reasons and i think you should facilitate uh the desires of the player in order to you know make your game the most enjoyable it can be so that's just kind of my own little discussion right there about whether or not random battles are a bad thing because I feel like a lot of people just hear like oh there are random battles just like oh fuck that I don't even care about it now granted now again uh, just so I can show you you know you saw that high security level three that eliminates encounters is grayed out that requires you to have five mega level Digimon in your party at the same time like I don't right now I don't even think no I can 
I could have five me uh, mega level Digimon in my party right now. But that being said, it's not something that's going to happen until very late in the game or early-ish in the game if you grind way, way, way too much. Um... And so that's why I think it's kind of just like, ah, you know, what's the point? At, like, at that point in time, when you have enough Digimon to use it, you're just bashing through battles without a single problem in the world in the first place. They may as well be eliminated. <laughs> that kind of a thing. So, you know, something like this, it's a step forward, but they need to go a little bit further. So, now I wanted to talk about this game specifically. Do you enjoy JRPGs? Of course you do. <laughs> Who does not enjoy JRPGs? Another thing that I think that I want to talk about with this game, another, you know, the streamlining process, grinding, right? We all know that grinding is a very, uh, wait, what? That's really, huh? I do not remember this ability. Oh, you know what? Cause I'm thinking of the wrong dude. All right. So anyway, grinding is a very real part of a lot of RPGs, you know, just the necessity to, uh, grind. Sorry, this battle's gonna take a little bit because I reset them. Oh, damn, that did damage. Never mind, this battle is not gonna take very long at all. Lilithmon is gonna fuck some people up. Well, now she got stunned, so maybe not. But so anyway, like I said, one of the big things is grinding. You know, the necessity of getting experience, powering up your dudes. So, thus, we talked about streamlining earlier. So how would you streamline that process? Well, you would give the player the ability to gain more experience. And that's just what we've done. These dudes that are throwing poop at the enemy, quite literally, they are not here because A, aesthetically, they appeal so very much to me. They are not here because I think they are awesome. They are here because they increase the amount of XP you get by, I believe, 150%. Watch these dudes' levels. Did you see how many levels everybody just got? That is a ridiculous amount of levels. It takes very little time. I don't care about escape dash. It does not take very much time in order to get to level 99. You see that that other one is level 99 because I did not want to get rid of him. Now, I can even make that better by getting a third, what is it called? Platinum Numamon. And on top of that, there are items called uh, Tactician USBs, I believe they are called. So you see I got three of them on this one. I believe I have two on him, yeah, and then one on her. So obviously that could get even better if I have a Platinum Numamon uh, on... Does it actually tell you? No, it just says increases XP. So if I had another Platinum Numamon in here, that would give me two more plus her one on top of that, plus that other Platinum Numamon's boost, and then this guy has one that is not a Tactician USB because I, just, I have uh, only five of those, right? I think five, maybe six. I don't know. Um, but I have the majority of those equipped. No, yeah, I have six, because the other one has three, he has two. I can do math. I'm so good at math. So I can in increase the amount of experience I can get by a significant amount. It almost entirely removes the grind. Uh, and that is a goddamn wonderful thing. It is beautiful, especially in a game like this, where you're constantly digivolving, de-digivolving, blah, blah, blah. Now... I wanted to talk about this game specifically just in case you were curious because I just wanted to show off that little bit of XP how wonderful that is to be able to boost the amount of experience that significantly to the point where you're getting that many levels per battle uh, that's amazing that's fantastic and I do think again that's something that a lot of games should include not necessarily like it's not for instance any game that has random battles I feel should have the ability to modify how often you get in those random battles as often as you want Oh, crap. I thought I, I think I remembered. I think it's health and sports. Can't remember. It's Halloween, motherfuckers, but that's not an option. Um, But anyway, yeah, so about this game specifically. It was a little weird. It was a little weird starting out because it took about 30 minutes of gameplay before I ever even saw a Digimon. That was very odd. I was expecting, you know, starting out. It'd be like the anime where, you know, you're out on a camping trip. Suddenly you get sucked up into the digital world and, oh, hey... Where are we? What's going on? What's this giant bug attacking me? That is not what happened. This game is based in the real world. I actually, in my head, I kind of compare it to Mega Man Battle Network. Because you see, so you see this little machine right here, right? You saw me go into this little place. We can talk about it. Now, this is not anywhere really particularly special. I mean, this is a special area. Like, this isn't the main place you can go. I cannot go into the main place. 
but so but this is part of the internet right you have all these screens which i believe are you know just showcases of various places i don't actually know what they are but under normal circumstances you would be able to go onto the internet and then go to various web pages using attained urls places where you can talk to people places where you can shop places where you can get into random fights explore find items have quests all kinds of stuff available for you so that's why i kind of compare it to Mega Man battle network because it's very similar to jacking in uh and you know transitioning from land to megaman.exe and that's kind of that's kind of the end of that comparison i guess i don't really have anything more than that but uh so it's very it's not quite as tied into digimon as i might like that is one of the common complaints i see about this game is that uh, the Digimon are just kind of a means to an end more so than like a focal point of the story where like I said when you have, when you're in the anime you are in their world you are surrounded by them you're helping them uh, specifically and in this game more or less you're kind of dealing with real world problems and Digimon like I said they're uh, basically perceived as programs that aid hacking abilities. And so that's kind of what they're utilized for, at least for a while. The story does change up along down the road, but obviously I don't want to get into spoilers. But for a very long time, the story takes a pretty decent amount of time to develop and get to a stage where I legitimately feel like the Digimon kind of acquire uh, proper meaning and actually have good interaction with the story versus just kind of being there and being tools. And that was so that was a little bit weird. And so, like, I promise, if you manage to get through that little bit, obviously, if you have played a lot of JRPGs, you are very trained in being able to uh, kind of go through a slow slog at the very beginning. Not to, you know, I don't want to say that should be a staple of JRPGs. It is. There are certainly a lot of JRPGs out there that take a very long time to get going. Like, I still remember uh, Sweet Code in 5 was my first Sweet Code, and I love that series. I love that game. But if I remember correctly, it took me, like, two and a half hours to even get like a fight that wasn't just a tutorial fight in order to actually you know like be given an area i get to go explore it took an absurd amount of time just not even to get started at the not even to get the story started not even to finish with the exposition to you know set the stage and all that shit it took that long just for me to be able to get into my own fights and experience more of the game it was absurd this game is not that bad but that is certainly, I believe, a flaw in the design of a lot of JRPGs in that they put too much of a focus on setting things up and not enough focus of drawing in the player with the mechanics and tying the mechanics into the story and being able to do both at once. It's just like you are thrown a substantial amount of exposition all at once, then you get a couple battles that you, you know, are allowed to utilize for the tutorial, various things like that. And then you're thrown a whole shit ton more of exposition again, and then you're finally released uh, to kind of go be able to go and explore your own area. That is why one of the more recent games that came out, it came out near the end of December, I believe December 27th or so, maybe the 28th, Legends of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel. They just throw you into the thick of it. They put you in, they don't explain the battle system to you at all. They allow you to figure it out, test things on your own. They throw you right into the middle of a big battle where the stakes are very high. You don't know the exact stakes, but you know that shit is real and shit is going down and you gotta stop it. And so it does that. It draws you into the world. It shows you the characters. It shows you their abilities. And then it backtracks a little bit and it's like, alright, hold up. Now let me explain to you how all of this happened. And now, you know, again fair amount of dialogue occurs a fair amount of setting the stage but not very much before you're thrown into your first dungeon and allowed to explore and then now you're given the tutorial now you're allowed to uh now the game explains mechanics to you so on and so forth i felt like that was one of the better jrpgs that i have played in recent times yes that is those answers are almost entirely meaningless i think they increase uh there is a statistic in this game called cam i'm not sure what that stands for like i don't know if it's supposed to be like camaraderie i don't know exactly what cam is short for but as you can see there's 34 percent uh i think that boosts that a tiny little bit it can go obviously it starts at zero percent it can go up to 100 percent so anyway back to what i was talking about that is i think a severe you know while we're on the topic of game design since we were already talking about that 
that is something that I think needs to be fixed in general in JRPGs, especially certain ones. You know, a lot of people were really, really disappointed in Final Fantasy uh, 13 for that. I mean, you know, obviously there are a whole host of reasons, but one of the biggest ones is simply the fact that a lot of people feel like you are thrown into a 15-hour tutorial and then finally, after all that time, the game really opens up. And while it's a little exaggerated, it is certainly true that you are put on training wheels for far, far too long uh, in that game. And it takes way too long to get going. And that is certainly a native flaw that is present in so many JRPGs. And it continues to be, you know, despite the fact that everybody knows it's not... Well, I don't want to say everybody knows it's not good game design, because obviously people are still doing it that are designing games. Thus, not everybody knows that that's bad game design. But that being said, I feel like pretty much everybody that plays those games knows, like, it should not take this long to set this up and allow me to actually get involved in the game and get, um, uh, what am I, what, am, what word am I trying to think of? Get invested in the game. That's the main thing. You want somebody to be invested, you want somebody to uh really truly get pulled in by the game and want to continue playing versus having that thing where it's like all right i guess this is necessary in order to set the stage for the story i guess i can slog through it because hopefully uh at the other end of this field is a wonderful sight you know a beautiful valley with flowing rivers and beautiful trees and all kinds of fruits and wildlife the experience of a lifetime shortly following this uh boring as hell grassland area where nothing is different and nothing is happening and i just have some motherfucker walking beside me droning in my ear non-stop eventually their throat will get dry they will shut up and i will reach that valley where i can enjoy my life right like that's how a lot of jrpgs are perceived um and like I said, this one's no exception. It takes a fairly decent chunk of time to really get going. And that is certainly a problem. Like I said, 30 minutes just to see your first damn Digimon in a Digimon game. That's kind of unacceptable. Pokemon introduces you to your first Pokemon within the first, like, five minutes. It knows what the fuck is up. It knows what you're there for. So, anyway, just to talk a little bit about this, about the mechanics. So, you saw me come in here. This is where you handle all of your Digimon stuff. So, you can, um obviously digivolving and oh wait no i didn't i wasn't here was i here i can't even remember you can digi convert dude so every single time you get into a fight you scan the digimon a little bit you need a hundred percent um in order to be able to basically create that digimon 200 percent what you can see is max gives you some sort of benefit that i cannot remember what it said i just know it's a good thing you have this thing returned to data which i believe just uh oh hey look at that i have never used this you can return material at Digimon scan data. Select this Digimon that you want to return to scan data. The Digimon will be terminated and the scan rate oh, will be increased by 100%. Oh, I see. So yeah, I've never used that. But apparently that allows you to basically kind of reset a Digimon, I guess, if you want. Uh, load allows you to basically, like, well, actually, I can just show you because I don't have to confirm it. can I like oh I see so that's the Pokemon you are Pokemon that's the Digimon you use and then this one gives additional so as you can see this just gives XP now obviously I do not want to do that I want to keep all these dudes but so that's a way to get a bunch of XP all at once seems entirely unnecessary given that uh, I can get so much more XP so much faster by just using these dudes in battle but anyway then you have this so you have farms that you can use let's go over to the farms and then you have the digi bank which just houses stuff but anybody that's on farms as long as the game is loaded and running they will gain experience not very very little like it's nowhere near comparative to the amount that you get through um but you know i still have this nice little scenery it's fun to watch your little dudes are running around etc etc but the main thing is that you can command them to do things so training is based upon you have here change leader so all of these all over on the far right defender durable uh searcher builder all that stuff, those are different basically personality types, and depending on which one is currently active, that will determine the main statistic that gets raised through training. So, let me just come over here real quick. So you have right here, you see attack 149 plus 0. That is what you get through training. Every single Digimon has 
base statistics that they always utilize. I believe their personality will augment those by a little bit. Like, they get a little bit more in whatever uh, stat that is. So, like, for instance, the defender personality, that's defense. So, I believe his defense stat is a little bit higher than normal on top of the extra plus 34. But so, that is related to the ABI over there. That determines how many you can go up. I don't even know why I'm talking about this because I don't even have a complete mastery of knowledge surrounding this stuff. But, so that's basically how you raise statistics and how you kind of augment Digimon or power them up is through the use of training in order to get that. And obviously there's a limit to how high that can go. So you can't just get, you can't just keep training over and over and over to get everything to plus nine, uh, 999 or anything like that. Um, oops, my bad. Or you can use develop that allows them to create items or investigate which discovers cases and cases. I don't know why it says discover cases and items. I have never seen a, an item discovered through this. But it discovers cases and those are side quests. That's literally what they are. They're just side quests. The side quests in this game, kind of boring. They only come in two varieties. One is literally just a fetch quest and the other one is a find and kill quest. Like that's it. That's all, that's all the variety of the side quests. Work on that. People that develop this game, I love it for a lot of reasons. Your side quests are not one of them. Please work on that. But one of the things I do want to talk about, do you see how all these dudes look, right? Like you come in here, you see their sprites, you see how they look. How amazing would a Pokemon game using these type of graphics look? Oh my golly gee willikers, Nintendo. Please do this. Good God. This game looks. I mean, now, there are. Obviously, it's not the highest budgeted game in the world. It certainly is. There are graphics that could get better. I believe also it was originally a Vita game that got ported to the PS4. So something that's, you know, designed for the graphical powers of the, P of the Vita first is not going to be, you know, pushing the PS4 to its limits. But that being said, the way this looks. You add in Nintendo, specifically Pokemon's budget to that, the graphical powers they would have. See, one of my one of the, my big problems with this, uh, you see all these skills right here. Only their special moves have like particularly impressive animations. Everything else just has like a generic starting uh, animation. So like the Digimon that initiates it doesn't do anything special. And then it has a generic ending based on, you know, like what... So you see Common Hammer 1, 2, and 3. They all have basically the same animation. It just gets a little bit bigger each time. Like, that's it. Um, so, you know, actually having more of that, having more diversity in the skills and, you know, just tailoring it more to each Digimon, giving them more personality through the moves, that would be amazing. But like I said, that's something that you need a budget to do. So Nintendo, get on that because i can say with complete and utter surety in my words that's not even a word that's how sure i am that's how positive i am that i know this to the depths of my heart that i can use words that are not even words this i have had more fun with this game than i have had with any recent pokemon game i said it Y'all make a Pokemon game like this, we can talk. But so long as you stick to your portable games, and you don't use the power of the Wii U, or the Nintendo NX, we're gonna have problems. I got words to say. So please take note, y'all should make a console Pokemon game. Obviously people have been clamoring for that for ages, and I don't mean Pokemon Stadium. Give us a real Pokemon full experience RPG on a console and you will all be billionaires by the end of lunch the next day after that game releases good golly so thank you for listening to this if you enjoyed this let me know and I will think of more because you know for those of you that may not be aware I am currently majoring in computer science specifically programming and the main reason I got into it is because I would love to one day design games. So, thus, doing that, I keep an open mind about uh, when I'm playing games, how I might improve them, how I might change them, uh, depending upon the game type, what's going on, that kind of thing. I have also conceptualized an entire game of my own that I would one day love to pursue, but obviously I'm not going to say a damn word about it because I don't trust you thieves out there in the world that are going to take it 
and become trillionaires with the idea. Because that's how good it is. But, you know, so like I said, it's just... I sit here, I analyze a lot of things. I think, all right, what would I do to make this better? Uh, how could this be improved? Can it be improved upon? Is it even worth improving upon? Or should it be something that should just be surgically removed and never reattached? Just leave it alone, cut it away, and let it, you know, die a natural death. All that kind of stuff. So that's where this comes from. And, you know, when I'm playing games, there may be other things that I think of that I may want to talk about. And if this is particularly enjoyed, then I will certainly do that. So, again, thank you for listening, and I will talk to y'all next time.